Hi, welcome back. This is the third uh, small lecture. Actually, we are continuing the first lecture, but we have broken the parts. Okay. Uh, so now we will discuss about bandwidth. So bandwidth is very confusing. I will tell you. There is no consensus on what uh, definition of bandwidth is practically. Now, uh, in this small uh, you know presentation, let's uh, assume we have a signal let's call it w of t okay so w of t can be any signal but here we uh, mostly refer to the signals of this type uh, suppose if you see uh, nrz non return to zero line coding okay so you will have sequence of zeros and ones like this okay so this will be our one type of w of t okay which will be constrained so uh, suppose if you assume bpsk for bpsk you can simply have plus root e minus root e uh, for uh, binary one and binary zero and the signal corresponding to that will be sequence of ones and zeros so we would like to define a power spectral density for that so here is a weird definition of power spectral density i will explain it separately what why this is power spectral density right now let's take it as a definition let's try to understand various terms so first of all i will try to elaborate on what this capital w subscript t f means it is a truncated version of w of t why we truncate it between minus t by 2 to t by 2 suppose t by 2 is a time period uh, in case of no return to zero pulses suppose this is a t okay so minus t by 2 to t by 2 right minus t by 2 to t by 2 it corresponds to a pulse of duration uh, t right so what happens is since after every uh, t uh, you know time uh, t seconds the pulses are repeating so we will truncate it we will be concentrating on uh, you know the signals on the signal between minus t by 2 to t by 2 again when i will explain uh, some example it will be more clear right now you think of it as a truncated version of w of t we just concentrate on one time period now if you look at that then uh, the power spectral density defined in this way you take this uh, w uh, truncated version okay and what is this this is basically wt of t is truncated version wt of f is fourier transform of that okay so you have a time signal w of t you truncate it between minus t by 2 to t by 2 then you take fourier transform of that that will be wt of f okay so this bar here means that we are taking mean mean square right so you take the mean square of uh, you know you know you, you take square of that and take the average of the, that Fourier transform and divide by the time interval t, right? Now what you do is you increase this time interval, okay? Take it to infinity so that you can include all the samples. And in limiting case, what the quantity you get is the power spectral density. So you don't worry if you don't understand it right now, okay? We will uh, I, as I as I told I will explain it in detail but right now i want to just say that power spectral density is you can say a function which what what it gives you feed in the frequency f it will tell you what is the power corresponding to this frequency in the signal okay so it will tell you some story about bandwidth also okay so let me uh, you know just uh, on this slide itself uh, if i plot suppose power spectral density of some signal may come up like this right so what you can see is so uh, x axis is f and y axis is your power spectral density right so what is happening as you can see that uh, a major portion of this signal has 
may you know the power is contained uh, in this frequency range in this frequency range sorry and outside this frequency you can see that the contribution is less right so power spectral density tells you that which frequency components have more power more contribution in the signal okay you will see later it will be used to define the uh, yeah, bandwidth now i will try to introduce here one more concept of baseband signal and bandpass signal i have already done this in communication system one i will take here a very simple example suppose you take qpsk signal because ultimately we want to find you know bandwidth of practical constellations so for finding bandwidth see here is the thing you need to find power spectral density okay so for qpsk how will you represent one point for example one of the points is root e by 2 root e by 2 okay so if you again recall the lectures of communication system okay so if you again recall uh, you know suppose this is the qpsk okay so any point of qpsk can be treated as a complex number we, you know that so suppose if we take one point here uh root e by 2 root e by 2 that can be represented as a complex number like this root e by 2 plus d root e by 2 right and you know that corresponding to this point what is the band uh, pass band signal that is the signal which is sent transmitted over antenna after modulation that will be root e by 2 cos of 2 pi fct minus root e by 2 sin of 2 pi fct how will you obtain this what is the short form so here is a simple exercise you can try it over places that you multiply this g of t you multiply the g of t okay with e to the power j 2 pi fct what will you get so g of t is root e by 2 plus j root e by 2 and e to the power j fct is cos of 2 pi fct minus j sin plus j sin 2 pi fct you multiply the two you will get real part and imaginary part you take the real part you will observe that real part is exactly nothing but this okay this will be the real part so if you are so this this gives us the general form actually that if g of t is any baseband signal okay baseband means without modulation baseband means okay you are like basic message signals dpsk qpsk mpsk these are the baseband signals if g of t is any baseband signal to get passband signal corresponding to it you have to do one thing multiply it with e to the power j 2 pi fct where fc is the carrier frequency then take real part of that very simple now you see what will be the consequence suppose g of t which is the qpsk signal or any other mqam mpsk suppose you know its power spectral density okay how will be that computed here is the formula for that and how exactly it will be done we will see that but here is the formula for that suppose w of t is a signal corresponding to uh, you know is is the representation of a modulation uh, signal and then you can find the truncated version then you can find the fourier transform then you can find it as power spectral density now you know the power spectral density of g of t so oh, you want to know the power spectral density of the pass band signal s of t so how will we do that we will use the basic modulation theorem again right you recall that if you had uh, you know suppose you have a signal m what's up just a moment oh uh, you have a signal m of t right you multiply it with cos uh 2 pi fc there is some issue with it okay uh yeah okay so you write cos 2 pi fct then you know the modulation theorem that if m of t has uh, for a transform m of omega 
right by multiplying cos what happens it will get shifted by the amount fc so now if you look at this in the previous slide g of t is multiplied with e to the power j2 by fc then it is real part okay so that real part will be cos and sine term like here s of t is given by root e by 2 cos 2 pi f c t root e by 2 sin 2 pi f c t so what will happen that it will get shifted so that is why if p g if p g of f is power spectral density of g of t baseband signal then the power spectral density of s of t will be p g shifted by f c here f c here 1 by 4 comes because of Fourier formula 1 by 4 is already there right now, as an example, usually the symbol is represented at least theoretically by rectangular pulse, right? You all know uh, if you uh, suppose have binary sequence, so you will represent that by rectangular pulses, correct? So on and so forth. So what will be the, you know, bandwidth? or what will be the power spectral density corresponding to rectangular pulse you all might be thinking you know it so it will be sync Fourier transform of rectangular is sync power spectral density will be proportional to square of Fourier transform hence power spectral density of rectangular pulse is sync square and you know sync function is defined for all the you know uh, free, free range of frequencies let me uh, you know show you some plots suppose if you can see this plot here is a sync function let me zoom it see on this side of screen left hand side i have defined it sine of x square divided by x square this is the sync function if you look carefully at the sync function you know it is defined at each and every frequency although the value is less but if i go on so i'm going to minus f you see it is having some value okay now let me take it back here now on pause to x axis i'm increasing the x that is frequency you know although the value is decreasing but it is not going to zero okay you, you are always getting some value of sync square function right but if you see like this, what you observe is that the major portion of sync, the major value it has between minus 2 and 2. After minus 2 and 2, in fact 2.5, you can see that, in fact 2.7 here, 2. Point, this is 2. Point, oh, this is pi, okay, and this is minus pi. So you can see after pi and minus pi, the value of the amplitude of sync square is very less, right? You, you have to zoom it out to see but theoretically it is not zero right suppose if i take if i take on the right hand side i go to right extreme okay i'm going to very much extreme here you are looking almost zero but if you zoom it out you go on zooming it okay see it is showing you the y-axis value as 0 0.0003 it is not zero but it looks like zero okay very small value but not exactly zero see here i have now zoomed it out too much at very high value although the value is how much 2.555 into 10 to the power minus 6 but still theoretically you can't say it is zero now coming back to the slide so we have one definition called absolute bandwidth it is absolute bandwidth is defined as a range of frequencies over which signal has non-zero power spectral density theoretically so theoretically the bandwidth of rectangular function is infinite because at all frequencies there is some value now this is not practical major then we cannot transmit anything then we don't have infinite bandwidth so we have one practical major that's called null to null bandwidth that is the width of main spectral lobe what is that this is the main spectral lobe okay this one the first one between uh, between this minus pi zero and here is a pi zero okay so beyond this pi point okay that is four five six these are the secondary lobes so we will consider the bandwidth to be between this and these points 
so the frequency between zero and this point three this will be the bandwidth that is what null to null loop means okay there is another measure that's called half power bandwidth that is interval between frequencies at which power spectral density drops to half power 3 db level also called 3 db bandwidth so what does it mean so if you again look at this plot at the top end we have uh, you know the power level suppose something it is here one now what is the 50 percent that is here 0.5 okay somewhere here right so the frequency corresponding to this point will be taken as bandwidth okay i will give some more examples in the live class which will make it more clear uh, so i will stop at this point and after this we will basically do some examples wherein uh, we will come to know how actually we can compute power spectral density and you know how can we find the bandwidth thank you for listening